So up until now, we've really only focused on using A-B testing in conjunction with Firebase Remote Config to help you A-B test things that are happening inside your app. But it turns out there are also things outside your app that you might want to A-B test as well. For example, how about those notifications that you're sending? Wouldn't it be nice if you could A-B test those too? Not just to see which ones are getting people to tap on them, but also persuading them to do important things like spend quality time within your app or make an in-app purchase. Well, it turns out you can use A-B testing for that too, which is a good thing because otherwise this would have been a terrible intro. Let's find out how on this episode of A-B Test Like a Pro. So A-B testing works in conjunction with Firebase Cloud Messaging to help you run experiments with your notifications. And Firebase Cloud Messaging, or FCM as the kids like to say, consists of a few different pieces that all work together. First, you have the backend service itself. Now this records which device token corresponds to what kind of device, so it knows whether or not to route your messages through APNS. It's also got a few other nifty features that I'm not gonna get into now. It's a secret. Then there's the client library, which helps register your device with cloud messaging and sends information about the notifications you received, analytics, without your needing to do any extra coding. Then you've got the notification section of the Firebase console. This basically is a tool that makes it easy for anybody in your organization to send a notification through FCM without your needing to write any code to talk to the service. So you can compose your whole message in there, maybe determine what subset of your users you want to send this message to, and even do nice things like schedule your notification to be delivered at some point in the future. It also provides you with some basic analytics around your notifications. Now, for ordinary notifications, you don't have to use the Firebase console. In fact, many developers have written their own tools to send messages over FCM. But for A-B testing, you do. So to get started with A-B testing with notifications, you're going to need two libraries on your client. First, not surprisingly, is Firebase Cloud Messaging, which provides the foundation necessary to make sure that Firebase can talk to your device through the FCM service, as well as enabling some of the other analytics you can use to see your results. Now, we already have some helpful videos on how to get started with FCM on Android and iOS, so go ahead and check those out if you need help adding those libraries to your app. But the good news here is that there's very little client code you need to get the basic FCM service up and running, which is all you really need for A-B testing. Now, even if you already have cloud messaging installed, I would recommend doing a pod update or putting the latest version into your Gradle file because you are gonna need a fairly recent version of the library installed on your app. This will include the logic needed for cloud messaging to tell analytics about any A-B tests that we're running on our notifications. Which leads us to the other library you're gonna need, and that's analytics. Now, analytics is part of the core Firebase library, which means that if you've got FCM installed, you already have at least a simple implementation of analytics running within your app, but you might not be using it to its fullest. As I noted in our first video, you can use events recorded by analytics as goals for your experiments. Now, analytics automatically records a few events like making an in-app purchase and opening a notification, but if there are any app-specific events that you might want to record as goals, such as like completing a level in your game, using whatever new feature you're promoting, or visiting your in-app store, you should make sure those are also recorded as analytics events. So with these prerequisites in mind, let's take a look at how we'd set up A-B tests for a notification. Now, this is gonna cover a lot of the same ground that we covered in our remote config experiments, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time going over content that I've already covered in a previous video. If you do want more information about any of this stuff, be sure to check out our other videos in the description below or probably linked in one of them fancy YouTube info cards. So let's say I've added a brand new rate that houseplant feature to my app to help us better understand what houseplants you might like. Well, I'm excited to get people to try it out, and I think a notification might be the way to do it. Now, using Firebase Analytics, I'd probably want to add something like a houseplant rated event if I didn't have one already, because that's going to be the main goal of my notification. I want people to get into my app, try out the new feature, and rate at least one houseplant. So it turns out I already have the FCM library installed in my app, so really just adding this one analytics event is all I need to get going from a code standpoint. Now to start an experiment, we're gonna to wanna to go to the notifications panel of the Firebase console. From there, we can click on this tab to start a new experiment or see the status of all our existing experiments. Or we can click this create experiment button to jump right into creating a new one. Now you can see here, we have a lot of the same setup fields as creating experiments in remote config. 
We can give our experiment a name and a description, decide which app we want to target, and perhaps pick a subset of our users to target with this notification. Uh, note that we can't use FCM topics here, but we can target segments like user audiences, app version, which would be important if only the recent version of my app contained this new feature, and language, which will probably be important since I'm going to be sending this notification in English. We can also define what percentage of our target users we want to send this notification to. Like with other experiments, I might recommend keeping this small if you're at all worried that you might turn off users or create some kind of backlash with a poorly worded notification. Don't worry, you'll still be able to roll out your notification later to the rest of your users once this experiment is done. Next, we get to our variance. Now, this time there's only one variable we're allowed to change here, and that's the notification message itself. So we can try a couple of variations here and see what works best. One note here is that uh, up here in the control group, you have the option to leave this field blank. This will basically not send a notification at all. And so that's if you want to A-B test the difference between sending a notification and just not sending one, which can also be useful. OK, now for our goal, we want to determine what is the main point of sending this notification. Now, it could just be getting our users to tap on the notification, in which case I might want to add notification open as our main goal. But is that the real goal you're trying to get to here? I mean, it's probably not. Most likely, you want our user to do something else within your app, whether that's spend more time with it or perform a specific task. And you have to remember that even if a user doesn't tap on your notification, they've seen it, and that might be enough to get them to respond to your app differently. So in my case, since we want to direct users to check out our new Rate That Houseplant feature, we'll want to make our goal the Houseplant Rated Analytics event. And as you can see down here, A-B testing by default will also include notification open among the secondary goals of my experiment. So I can still see what version of my notification got more people to open it without making that the primary goal. OK, in this next section here, you can decide when you want to send this notification. Maybe it's immediately, but maybe it's the next day or at a specific time. And just like with other notifications you send through Firebase, you can choose to send this at a time that's local to your recipient's time zone. So you can send notifications all over the world without waking up your users in Indonesia at like 3 in the morning. Down here are some other advanced features that might look familiar if you've used Firebase notifications in the past. You've got things like adding custom data, turning on a badge count, enabling sound, and so on. Now just note that none of these attributes can be A-B tested, only the notification message itself, but they will be included with every variant. Oh, and uh, remember that if you're on iOS, you probably want to keep this priority field set to high. After that, you can click Review, and we are back in our Experiment Review panel. Again, this should look pretty familiar to you if you've watched our previous videos. And just like our remote config experiments, you can also test any of your variants on any individual device by using this Manage Test Devices panel. As you recall, I do this by grabbing my instance ID token by using this line on iOS and this line on Android. I would then copy whatever giant string I get into here, select the notification variant I want to see, click Add, click Save and Send, and the notification will show up on my device. Now, once you've tried out all your test devices and like the way the notification looks, go ahead and click Start Experiment, and that will run the experiment. Now, once an experiment is started, you'll start seeing results trickle in after a few hours. But it usually takes about a week for A-B testing to officially declare a winner. Now, this is about half as long as the time it takes to declare a winner in a remote config test, since you don't have the same kind of, hey, I'm going to pay more attention to the things that are different by us as you do with remote config, right? It's a, it's a notification. It's always different. So I'm not going to get any meaningful results from my little test app. But let's take a look at some experiment results for an actual experiment in Bingo Blast. They ran an experiment a week ago to see if they could increase their daily user engagement. So let's see what they found out. So I think most of these results here should look pretty similar to what we had in our remote config experiment results. And you can always check out that video if you want more detailed information about any of the stuff we're seeing here. So up here, you have a brief summary of your experiment, if it found a clear winner or not, or if it still needs more data. And you'll have all your detailed results here in this expandable section. Now below that, you can see your most likely improvement range for all the goals you're measuring. That'll include your primary goal as well as the secondary goals, things like the rate at which the notification was open, your app's retention, stats like that. Now the Bingo Blast folks tried three different notification variants. In the control group, they didn't send a notification at all. They kept that message field blank. Then for the other two variants, they tried two different notifications. One was a back to school kind of notification, and the other was a level up and unlock new content kind of notification. And you can see here that both of these notifications did a significantly better job of increasing our user engagement than not sending a notification at all. See how these improvement goals are in a nice, confident green with this little upward arrow? 
That's A-B testing's way of telling us it's confident that these variants will do better than the control group. They also did a significantly better job of causing a notification open event, but I guess that's to be expected since this control group didn't send a notification at all. For most of these other measurements, in-app revenue, causing a level up event, and so on, there's a general sense that they may have performed better, but A-B testing isn't confident enough to be sure. We've got some pretty wide ranges here at most of these things. And just like before, if you click on any one of these results, you can see more detailed information about them. Here we've got the overall improvement range, the likelihood that this variant is better than the control group, the likelihood that this variant is the best one out of all of our variants, our raw value ranges, and in some cases, you'll get some pretty nice looking bar graphs below if you're more of a visual results kind of person. Now you'll notice that in our experiment, A-B testing is very confident that both of these variants will do better than our control group of not sending a notification at all. And while it seems like our level up notification did better than our back to school one, it's not quite as confident about picking that as the absolute best variant. And that's why it's telling us up on top here that there isn't a leader in our experiment. I mean, sure, it can't pick a winner out of these two, but I think we can say with confidence that sending either of these notifications will work better than not sending one at all. So if I were the Bingo Blast folks, I'd be looking to send out that level up notification to the rest of the group. And how would they do that? Oh, glad you asked. So back up here at the results summary section, you'll have more options depending on the state of your experiment. If you're in the middle of an experiment and you're still gathering information, you'll be able to increase your distribution to a larger percentage of your potential audience. When you do, you'll be given another chance to schedule these extra notifications since you might have scheduled your first batch to have already happened at some specific time in the past. You also have your choice of stopping the experiment, which will primarily just stop gathering information. And you can duplicate the experiment if you want to try running something similar. But probably the option you're most interested in is having the ability to push out a variant to 100% of your population as a real notification. If you're in an experiment with a clear winner, it'll probably show up here as a big button. But even if you're not in an experiment with a clear winner, it should be available through a menu option here. And you know, just because it's not in a big button doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I mean, you probably just ended up in a situation like Bingo Blast, where you had several versions that worked equally well. So you can just pick one, even if we haven't been able to statistically prove it's the best one. Now, when you do roll out a message, you'll get a dialogue like this one where you have a chance to pick a variant. And if your experiment has a winning variant, it'll already be selected by default. You can make any last minute edits, schedule a time to push this out. And this will basically go out to the rest of your audience that wasn't in your original experiment. Hit send and uh, there you go, it's sent. Now, once you've rolled out an experiment like this, it'll graduate to official notification status. And it'll show up here in the Firebase notifications panel, just like any other notification. And you'll have your usual stats here, notifications sent and notifications opened, although we don't record anything else here as a conversion event. Also, keep in mind that these stats aren't retroactive, meaning that if you run an experiment on 10% of your population, then roll it out to the remaining 90%, I would kind of expect these absolute numbers here to be 90% of your typical results. So like, don't freak out if they seem a little lower than what you're expecting, that's normal. And as a nice little bonus feature, if you're ever looking at a notification in the console that began its life as an experiment, you'll see a nice little button here that will take you to the original experiment, which I think is kind of neat. So there you go. Everything you've always wanted to know about A-B testing your notifications with Firebase. Now, if you're already using the FCM library in your app, it should be pretty easy to get one of these up and running. So uh, give it a try. And I will see you soon in a future episode of A-B Test Like a Pro.